there's a very good chance that you are playing the sax riff from Superstition wrong. And you probably have been your whole life. Now, I know you might say, oh, big deal, who cares if I'm playing it wrong? And yeah, of course, you're right. Who really cares at the end of the day? But if you're a complete saxophone and horn geek like me, these things really matter. So let's talk about Superstition and how you play it correctly. I discovered some interesting things about Superstition whilst doing this video, which I did not know. For example, did you know there's only three musicians on the entire record? Stevie Wonder plays clav, synth bass, drums, and obviously sings. And there's two horn players. There's Steve Medeo on trumpet and Trevor Lawrence on tenor saxophone. That's it. That's the only people who play on the whole record. That really surprised me. Um, Superstition is on Stevie Wonder's 1972 album, Talking Book, and of course, it's one of the most played songs in any band, probably anywhere around the world, in terms of horn parts. But, as you're about to discover, there's a very good chance that you're not even playing it correctly. So, my mission is to get us all playing the riff exactly as it should be. Now, of course, it doesn't really matter, but I am a complete, anally retentive horn geek. So, let's get right down to the the nuts and bolts and find out what you're doing wrong and how you can correct it. Okay, let's start unpacking some of these riffs. But just before we do, there's a very important thing to understand, which is that when they recorded Superstition, there are four individual horn parts. There's trumpet and tenor. Trumpet player is Steve Medeo. The tenor player is Trevor Lawrence. They recorded it once. Then they overdubbed another part. The first time they, they recorded it is in the left-hand speaker. The second time it's in the right-hand speaker when you listen to the recording. On the scores that we're going to look at, these are all in transposed B-flat pitch, okay? The first time they recorded it is trumpet 1 and tenor 1. Second time they overdubbed is trumpet 2 and tenor 2. Now, you might be thinking, looking at the score, ah, oh, but they're exactly the same. But they're not, <laughs> as we shall discover later on. So, first of all, let's hear this famous verse riff, which is the first thing that happens in the horns. Now, of course, what you're listening to is the exact horn parts from the record isolated from the rest of the track so you can hear them really clearly. Now, let's go, all the, go through all the things that you're probably or possibly doing wrong and make sure we correct them. First of all, there is a grace now into the first, into the first stab there, okay? It doesn't go like this. It goes... So make sure you get that little scoop into the first note. Second thing is that let's have a look at the first two notes. You'll notice that there is a 16th note rest after the first note. Many people, when they're doing the riff, for some reason, I don't know, uh, go like this. There is no note in between those two Fs, <laughs> all right? And if you don't believe me, let's listen again. Okay, so no ba ba da ba ba da 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 da. Forget it. It does not happen in the horns. Right. The third thing is let's have a little look at the end of the first bar where we've got this turn. Now, many people, um, well, some people won't even play a turn at all. So some people will play this, which I suppose is the logical, simple way of doing it. However, other people will do a turn like this. But the actual truth is, it's like a trill. It's a trill, but that you've only got time to trill twice before you go down to the C. So in slow motion, and also it does not turn up to the F, it turns up to the F flat, E, natural, obviously. So, Lots of details here. Now, if you don't believe me, okay, let's listen to this extremely slowly and you will hear it for yourself. Here we go. All right, that's it. Now, when it says full speed, it sounds like this. It just kind of sounds like a trill. So that is one thing that you will hardly ever hear people play correctly. The next thing is that at the end of the riff where it goes ba 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 da 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 
da. The trumpet goes down to the E flat, the fourth last note, and the tenor goes down to a C. So that's interesting. So the trumpet goes like this. And the tenor goes. So it's all unison apart from that one difference. Now you might say, yeah, that's just because they it was rough and they had to get it together quickly and they made a mistake. Nevertheless, this could be part of the magic. And when they did it the second time in the second sweep, they still did that same thing. So it was never corrected. So maybe it was an intentional thing. You never know. So there's another little detail. Now, let's move on to the next detail, which is the scoops at the end. Boop, boop, boop. Now, Stephen Doe does these lovely kind of uh, trumpet sort of little bends into those notes. which sounds absolutely fantastic. So make sure you get them in. You can do a little grace note or you can do it with your throat. Uh, try not to do it with your embouchure lip though because it might sound a bit dodgy. The dreaded li lip scoops, I call it. And this particular riff, the trumpet is up an octave and the tenor is an octave lower. You can see that it's written the same on the stave, but of course an, a tenor sounds an octave lower. So the riff is an octave lower. So you've got octave unison, apart from that one note on this riff. And a final point to make about the verse riff, which you might not be doing correctly, is that superstition, the 16th notes on the song swing, you know, it, uh, it's like a funk shuffle. But the horn parts are not played like that. They go... So they are played straight. And you'll notice, which isn't even on the list, that all the notes in that first run up are tongued. Ta 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 ta. They're not smooth. So when you put all that together. You get the correct riff. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you may never have known about the superstition riff. So let's all start playing the riff correctly on the next gig, shall we? Make sure you go and grab the free PDF that you can see there. It has got everything. It's got the trumpet parts. It's got the two tenor parts. It's got the tenor parts as alto parts, and it's got a score. It's got absolutely everything. This is one of the greatest PDFs I've ever made. So go and get the PDF now, and let's delve into this bad boy. The next riff is what you might call the chorus riff. That riff. And there are, let's have a look. One, two, three, four. There's five different versions of this riff. It's not the same every time. So the first time it happens, both record both, you know, passes are in unison, apart from the final stabs, we'll come to them in a minute, and it sounds like this. Right, so, a few things to note. There's a grace note into the, the first, uh, uh, into those Gs. So it sounds like this. Now, the really quirky bit, the, the really quirky thing about this riff is the final stabs. You can tell that if I pan the recording over to the left side, which is just going to be trumpet one and tenor one, you can hear the trumpet triple tonguing going. The tenor is just going. Check it out. Tenor's just doing that. And the trumpet's going. Now, the trumpet is actually lower than the tenor. So that's interesting. Now, if I pan it over to the second pass, which is trumpet two and tenor two, the trumpet does this thing where uh, if you play a high A flat on trumpet, you can play it with many different valve combinations. And as long as you've got plenty of air support, you can rifle those valves. And it just sounds like... <laughs> and the tenor plays the same part again. This is the, uh, the trumpet two and tenor two. Now the trumpet is up the octave, but there's still only two notes in the voicing, which is a C and an A flat. So that's what happens this time. Um, 
And uh, like I said uh, with the first verse riff, they were in octave unison. But this time you can see that the trumpet is down the octave uh, on the on the written music, which means that we're in perfect unison. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, nobody's in octaves, all right, until those final stabs. Now let's see how that differs from chorus two and three. Now what happens this time is that the parts do different things. So the, the, the first sweep does the same as it did before. The ending is very slightly different. He does a little kind of weird kiss off. The first trumpet does a little kiss off. <laughs> You'll hear that in a minute. But now the second part does something different. And even within the second part, the trumpet and tenor are doing different stuff. So first of all, I'll put the balance in the middle so you can hear the whole thing. Can hear that trumpet going <laughs> um so the parts down in the in the i'm gonna pan it over so you can hear the second sweep of horns they sound like this this is trumpet two and tenor two whereas the trumpet one and tenor one are doing this like before Now, of course, what this gives is a semitone clash where the G is rub uh, the uh, uh, beat three of the first bar. The G is rubbing against the A flat and you get the semitone clash. See? Sounds really cool. Now, the trumpet two is going... Da, 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 da. Now, my personal theory about that trumpet two thing is i think they went to record it and he started playing the original riff heard uh, heard um trevor lawrence play the long notes and thought oh yeah man i'm supposed to be playing the long notes and then corrected himself halfway through the riff <laughs> although i think in chorus three they they play that the same so maybe it was deliberate who knows so you've got this layering so that's chorus two um two and three now the next variation is this instrumental chorus link before verse three. Now this time they swap around. So this time trumpet one and tenor one play the long line. However, they play it differently. They go, wow, wow. So here's the two parts together first. And you'll notice if you look at the, the top line and the second line, the trumpet pushes by the eighth note and the tenor doesn't. So they're playing different rhythms, which is mad. Um, so here is the tenor one and trumpet one. And they come in, they come in different, they come in spare there. And the trumpet two and tenor two. And the horns are very distorted and um, overdriven on the thing, which is probably why it's got such a dirty, fat sound. Um, then we're into the outro choruses, which is um, the last time that you hear these riffs. And they, they're played again, the long riff, but this time it's call and response phrasing. And it hasn't got those little fall-offs. It's more legato. And it happens again in the outro. This time with the separation in phrasing. So the outro chorus the first time, it sounds like this. I'll put it in the middle so you can hear both parts. And they happen one after the other, call and response. Then the other one. And then the second time in the outro is more separated, like this. It's mad, isn't it? There's so many little differences. Okay, let's move on to the next theme in uh, in this song and see how we might be playing it, how we might be playing it wrong and how we can play it correctly. Now, a couple of things here. There is a cutoff on the second beat. There's not a big long note that they play after that riff. They do a definite tongue stop on beat two. And you've got these nice fall offs. Boo, 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 off. So let's have a little listen to that, both parts together. And now the tenor is up the octave and we're in perfect unison. So there's four horns playing exactly the same register. Now, listen to that nice bit of vibrato on the C that they do. I 
And remember the tongue stop on beat two. It's all these little details that really make it magic. Let's hear it one more time. Yeah, you can really hear that rap. They've got a definite cutoff there. Now, the next time that you hear that this phrase is when they do more of the call and answer thing at the end. So, uh, let me just find that in the outro. It sounds like this. So they're answering each other when you get when you get into this outro section. And if you go and get the PDF that you can see the link for there, you'll see the score and you'll see all the parts laid out and exactly how they interlock and how they're different and how people came in a little bit spare and missed a bit and then joined in later. And you can see how it all joins together. But let's play that riff one more time. Now, later on, as they start interlocking the parts, there's more of a long note there. So that is how these riffs are played, and that is what you might be doing wrong and how you can make them better. Hey, by the way, if you want a ton more really cool saxophone knowledge, check out my free Saxophone Success Masterclass. You can see the link there. It's a whole hour of really valuable stuff which can instantly make a big difference to your practice and your saxophone skills. Loads of people have gone through it, loads of people have loved it, so go and check it out using the link there. That's pretty much all we've got time for this week. Remember, there is an absolutely awesome PDF for Superstition. I wanna say it's the best PDF you're ever gonna see for Superstition, if you want it to be authentic, that is. <laughs> it's there, it's got all the trumpet parts, it's got the tenor parts, it's even got the tenor parts transposed or alto, and it's got the score, so you can see all the four parts at once and how they interact in the structure of the song. You can take it to your band, and people are going to be like, wow, can't believe you're playing that superstition riff correctly. Yeah, they're not going to do that. But you'll know. You'll know in your heart that you're doing it right and you'll feel pretty good about it if you're anything like me. <laughs> if you want to buy me a coffee, there's the link. And if you have bought me a coffee, merci beaucoup. I appreciate you very, very much. All right, I'm Jamie Anderson, pro saxophonist. You've been watching Get Your Sax Together. And until next week, practice hard, practice smart and enjoy thy music. Take it easy. How to play uh, Superstition correct. Oh, this is all waffly, right? Steve Medeo and Trevor Lawrence, forgot his name, nice one. I know, I know. I knew the first time, I've got to finish this section, man.